There's been a lot of footprints cast down there, different sizes, like some of these that Dr. Jeff's got here. Uh, I don't know if any of these are those, but at that one time, uh, Jerry Cruz, I think, had about 50 different footprints and shapes, and he lived down in that area. You know where the original film is today? I do not. Uh, there's been claims, you know, somebody said that uh, one is here and there, and, uh, you know, I had no idea because, you know, Roger had total possession of that between him and his brother-in-law, Al Daffy. In your professional opinion as a horseman, do you think the horses would have reacted as strongly to what you come across with, say, a grizzly bear? Well, I hadn't ridden this horse that I was riding very much, but I have, we don't have grizzly bears where I'm at, but we have brown bear. So I've ridden a lot in the mountains and encountered brown bear, and uh, it kind of depends on what the bear reacts and, and what what horse you're riding, you know, whether you're riding one that's been around a long time or one that hasn't been around for a long time. But yeah, I have ridden horses up in there and brown bear go oof, oof, oof and start running down the trail and the horse kind of throws a little bit and has a little trouble and you gotta be, you gotta stay with them a little bit. New, no, I do not, honey. I think if we leave them alone and they're curious creatures, this is my own personal opinion, and uh, I strongly believe that, uh, that these creatures will not harm human beings if they're left alone. But I think if we go out there and shoot at one or wound it, it's like any other animal's been wounded. You might have a problem on your hands. Describe the circumstances when you first saw the Yes, I was so tired, I drove, this is, I couldn't even go into all of what happened right after the film because it would take another hour. But anyway, I, uh, when I got home, I drove all the way that night, drove all that afternoon, it took us all day to get out of there, it was raining, mudslides and so forth. And so I drove uh, like almost 24 hours straight, or so, it was actually more than 24 hours. And I was so tired, I went to bed and, and, and I went to sleep. So I didn't see that uh, film footage for two days. And when I did see it, my first opinion was, that's not very good, I've seen it better than that. Which is a natural <laughs> assumption, you know, because I did see it better than that. You see what I'm saying? Uh, uh, I thought, well, I don't know what that everybody's getting excited about that, that ain't very good. <laughs> have you ever seen a creature similar to that one since? No, I have not. Do you want to? <laughs> oh, if I get a chip, yes, yes, I, I, I'd really like to. I'd like to be able to walk up to one and, and look it in the face and smile at it and say, hey. <laughs> <laughs> If it was a male. Well, I can't speak for Roger, but I can speak for Bob. Uh, we Roger and Al, they just could not leave well enough alone. And this, this is just me talking now, because I wanted to stay there in Yakima and really just kind of, just see what happened, really. Well, Roger and Al, right away quick, they wanted to travel with this film, which we did. And, uh, and it wasn't really, anything that I cared about because I'm not real. So first we went to California and talked to David Wolfer, Wolfer Productions. Uh, talked about getting back up in there and filming, doing some film footage. And, and I got David Wolfer mad right at the beginning because he said, well, uh, uh, we'll send an actor up there and, and say he's Bob and send him up through there. And I said, hey, I want to tell you something, Mr. Wolfer. And people don't talk to a movie producer like that. I'm just a little farm boy, and so I said, 
you don't have a man that can carry a camera and follow me up to there that'll film me. And he said, well, I think I do. I said, well, get him out here. You don't have, I can tell you, because I was in great physical shape at that time, and I could move. <laughs> Wait a minute, what do you mean smell different? <laughs> yes, I did. there was a smell. Roger and I never agreed on smell. Not totally agreed on it. I thought that this creature smelled kind of musky, skunky-like. Not quite as sharp as, a, as a, if you smell skunk, which most of us here have at one time. And, and Roger was, uh, he said, smelled like an old wet cow dog and then rolling cow manure. Oh, well, I kind of didn't want to go there. <laughs> that I saw about the creature. Well, you know, that's kind of a difficult question, but I'll do my best. Uh, the only thing that I could see that I don't see on, excuse me, is the film is the, the rippling of the muscle underneath that hair as it walked away. And then the sun was over there in the west kind of setting on it, so you can see at different times, or I could see at different times, that tremendous amount of bulk muscle down the back and the thighs and the shoulders. And every time I've seen that on the film, I've never really appreciated that bulk of muscle that I saw that October 20th in that afternoon. How tall do you guesstimate? Now that's a loaded question. <laughs> At that time, that particular time or shortly after, I was asked that question. Well, my first, when I first saw that creature, I was setting up on a horse of 16 hands tall, and with my eyesight, that's, that's uh, an estimate of nine feet. And so I would have thought at that time he's probably six and a half feet tall. But then it was further away when I stepped down off the horse and things were happening so fast that I never really thought about the height. I just knew it was a big, heavy muscle creature that was big. And, you know, and so I never realized uh, when they asked me that how, what I was really saying. I said, "Oh, probably over six foot tall." And so, when you know, when Bill Munns done his uh, sort of, or when he did his thing on it, it um, figured out to be seven foot three and three quarters. How how would you say the broad shoulders were? Biggest football player I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> I think I heard prior to deciding that the horses act nervous or anything of that sort. Not that I can remember that much because, you know, I'm used to riding horses that act every way, which you can tell. And so uh, a horse has got to get pretty stirred up before it bothers me very much. And Roger was riding along in front of me and I never noticed his horse acting up, although it was a real lively type horse. And, uh, but it, you know, it was one of those sunshiny October days and Roger was filming the, the, the red and colored leaves from October colors in the trees there. And, you know, it was just a pleasant day. And of course, things were kind of going along just perfect. I thought life was just <laughs> perfect that day until, until this happened. And, and you know, folks, you folks, it's so great to have you here. Of all the years that I that I uh, took flack, and so it's been so good to see you here. And I I'd like to be able to talk to each and every one of you, but if I will as much as I can, and I'll be here the rest of the day and tomorrow. Thank you very much. <laughs>